In the early 1990s, workers came into SeaWorld to open one morning. They went into the pen, the big tank, where the killer whale was kept. That 11,000-pound mammal was swimming in the tank, playing with something. To their horror, they discovered it was the body of an eight-year-old boy. This boy, who had no parental supervision, had gotten into SeaWorld through a soft week drink promotion. He apparently was mesmerized by the killer whale show and the trainer who went into the water with the whale and did fantastic things. And apparently he hid somewhere in the park as the park closed. And then later, after security guards had made their sweep, he went into the killer whale tank and into the water thinking that he could somehow play with an 11,000-pound mammal. It was a fatal mistake. Sometimes we think we can swim around in life with big things and they won't hurt us. There are small things also. There is a marine parasite. I won't try to pronounce what it's called because I would butcher the language. But this little tiny microscopic parasite waits for an opportunity when a clam's mouth is open. And if that little parasite gets the opportunity, it will go into the clam's mouth and embed itself in the muscle of the clam. Tiny, microscopic, what harm could it possibly do? Well, once it embeds itself in the muscle of the clam, it begins to eat and to feed off that muscle until eventually one time that clam opens its mouth and it can't close it. And with its mouth stuck open because the muscle has been destroyed, every predator that would want to feed on the body of a clam has a feast. Sometimes we think we can play around with small things and not get hurt. It's easy for us to look at the big things and say, watch out for those and to warn our children. You need to guard your life from these big things. But I want you to realize just as deadly and just as dangerous are the small things, the tiny parasites of thought that can enter into our minds and into our ways of looking at the world and looking at life and interpreting life that can ultimately lead to our destruction. Satan wants to corrupt our minds. Our focus in this short series is guarding your heart. But you understand that when the Bible speaks about the heart here, he's really speaking about our minds, for the heart is just a pump that can be replaced. He's speaking about that part of our minds that is the uniqueness of our personality, our very soul, the very essence of our being, and our thought processes. Satan wants to enter in and corrupt our minds, consider these five verses. Proverbs 4, 23. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. That's our theme verse. Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinketh, so he is. Or as one businessman put it, you are not what you think you are, but what you think you are. Romans 8, 8, the mind of a sinful man or the carnal mind is death. Colossians 1, 21, once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. Proverbs 15, 26, 
The Lord detests the thoughts of the wicked, but those of a pure heart are pleasing to him. These five verses all have this common theme, a mind that is turned toward wickedness and evil, even in the smallest expression, becomes a mind turned against God. 